Oh, hi, welcome to my latest video. Well, this one, I'm gonna do something I've done in the past, but uh, with a different version. I bought a refurbished PC from Newegg. I'll put the ad up on the screen now. This is how it came, just in a box like this, except for the shipping labels. It really didn't have anything else on it. And what I'll do is I'll open this up and we'll take a look and see what came with it. It's supposed to be a mini PC, the Lenovo Mini. So we'll take a look at it and I'll try to fire it up and see what happens. Now, if you stick around to the end, you will see some testing results that I will do. And I'll do a general review of how I believe this thing compares to some of the other ones that I've done in the past, including other refurbished machines that I bought at a very steep discount like this one. Okay, so here it is. Let's open up this box, see what we got inside. Well, some uh, padding, foam padding. Take that off. Hmm, not that much in here. Let me see. Looks like the power adapter. It uses a brick. Comes with a uh, a mouse. Hmm, a no-name mouse. It's not IBM, Lenovo, or anything like that. Has a keyboard. Looks like it's in a, it's been used. Let's see. Did it come with the tabs that you're supposed to get? Uh, it looks like the tabs are missing. So it doesn't have the tabs to elevate the keyboard. So it's, uh, you know, not quite refurbished, <laughs> as they would say, right? USB Type 2. And then what's left in here? Looks like just the PC itself. Inside of a plastic bag. Open this thing up here. Uh, there's a warranty information card here at the top. 18 month warranty for recertified computers. Thank you on there. Not a lot of detail, a phone number. I guess this is licensing information. That's what they have over here. Find your plan ID. I guess that's a warranty plan. I'll have to look at that later. It's supposed to have uh, Windows 10 pre-installed, according to the uh, ad that I originally used to buy it. Definitely says Lenovo. It has, oh, it looks like it has wireless and regular Ethernet network as well. So it has both of those. What's this? DisplayPort? It looks like that's a DisplayPort cable. Well, I wanted to go to HDMI, so I'll see if I can use an adapter. Or if I run into a problem, I'll just change this uh, VGA connector over to an HDMI. I have the adapter that can do that. It is quite small. On the front it has uh, two USBs. Looks like this might be a 3.0 and that's probably a 2 and it has a microphone and speakers and here's the power switch. In a future video I might open it up or if it's not working for me right now um, but for purposes of this I don't want to you know, avoid any warranty. So what I'll do now is I'll uh, go ahead and I'll hook it up and see if I can get this thing up and running. Okay, now I have it all hooked up here, as you can see. I have the power hooked up, I have a mouse and a keyboard hooked up, and I have an adapter to convert from the VGA to HDMI. And I'm capturing that. I also hooked up the Ethernet. And now I'll go ahead and I'll try powering this on and we'll, we'll see what happens, okay? Oh, now it's coming up on the screen. It just didn't, uh, it didn't show the right light. Okay. That's good to see. Oh, now it's going through a whole Windows setup. So let me go ahead and set this up. And it looks like we came right up into Windows. Okay, so what I did is I set the resolution to uh, more appropriate for the widescreen, 1920 by 1080. Then I went into About the Computer just to double check. It does have Windows 10 Pro installed. Looks like it's an older version, so I'll have to do a lot of upgrading and patching to it. Uh, I won't show that on this video, but it looks like it's, uh, you know, at least a working system. Doesn't feel that slow yet either, but I'll be doing some more testing as I get into it. So let me go ahead and, and do a full upgrade of this and see, uh, see how it runs after that. Okay, let me make sure it is set for automatic updates and other such things that are pretty critical. 
I will go into settings, then updates and security. I'm not up to date. Check for system updates. This may take a while, so I just want to make sure I get it started. And then I'll, I'll run this basically offline to completion and put a, the latest build on as well. Let me see how these first few updates work though. So it looks like it's already jumped ahead and it's going to start uh, updating a more recent build. So this is going to take quite a while. So I'm just going to jump ahead to when it's all updated and I'll proceed with some additional testing. Now, as we noticed earlier, the resolution is not that great and it goes out to the full resolution that I wanted, uh, 1920 by 1080, but it's not clear. I did test separately, connecting up DisplayPort cable up to the monitor directly and it can reach 4K very easily. So it's all a matter of what you're willing to put up with, the conversion between the uh, VGA and the HDMI obviously suffers a little bit. So anyway, let's go ahead and do some testing now. What I will do is I will open up some of the testing programs that I have and we'll, we'll run them and then I'll make mention of some of the comparisons that take place between this and similar machines that I've looked at in the past. Let's go over to the actual testing area. It's on my network drive, of course. My PC tools, I didn't bother copying them over to this particular PC because it only has a 128 gigabyte. So I didn't want to waste any of the space. Uh, in a future video, I may actually upgrade that. I took a look at the maintenance manual, which is available online, and you can see exactly what it is. It's actually a two and a half inch SSD, and it seems to be running pretty good, but let's test it. So we're gonna run Crystal Disk Mark. I'm gonna run the latest version, the 64-bit version, of course. And there's only one drive in there, the 128 gig. We actually have 119 free, which is pretty good. Here we go. I'll probably speed ahead once we uh, start seeing results. All done. And now that's some excellent results as far as I'm concerned. Definitely a disc controller in this particular PC that's uh, SATA 3, not SATA 2. Because SATA 2 is probably just a little bit over half that performance. So this is great. Glad to see that. We had to make adjustments and add a new disc controller on one of our previous refurbished ones that we were trying this on. So let's move on. Now let's take a look at what the processor performance looks like and uh, we'll run a test for that. Let me open this one up. And I think we'll go for um, Cinebench R20, which is what I generally perform in these uh, particular types of older PCs. Okay, let's see what we get here. Okay, we have one that's very similar, which is uh, the two core four threads uh, 4570T, which is what this one is. So let's see how it compares to the last time I tested something like that. Let me make sure I have all cores so that we're good. Yep, we got all threads going. Good. And I'll start a run. Okay, it did pretty good. Uh, we beat our last numbers from uh, when we tested a similar CPU a while back. It got a 735 points this time, as opposed to much lower numbers, uh, as you can see there, going far as far down as 438. So I think it did well, and a little bit surprising that it did so well. It's one of those things that you never know what kind of uh, silicon you're gonna get, right? So it's worthwhile looking into. Let me move on now, okay? Okay, now this is a view of what the power being drawn from the wall happens to be as we're running Cinebench. So you get a feeling here of, uh, you know, what sort of draw there is. It's not a lot. I think the highest number that I saw was probably about 115 watts at any one time. But I just wanted to show you, it's already about a third through the test at this point when I'm running this. So as you can see, it's a very low power system, which is ideal for the things that I have planned for it to be a supporting system within my network. Always connected and always running and always capable of uh, doing whatever I needed to do. Okay, let's go ahead now and uh, see the general statistics of the PC itself, all of the different monitors that it has available to it. I'm gonna run Hardware Info and Hardware Info 64 in particular. When we run this, we'll see, I'm gonna do all the sensors. 
we'll see everything that the PC can pick up internally. And as you can see here, it's got all of the features. We can see that the clock speed of each of the cores. We can see how, see how close they are to TJ Maxx. We can see the temperature of the various uh, CPUs and various other components within the system. We could even see all the way over to the right here, we can actually see what the chassis fan is running at. Currently about, uh, you know, 1100 RPMs, but it has gone, you know, as high as like 1220. So this is a pretty good thing to always try because you get to see all the things that could be monitored as you're checking the performance. So I wanted to show that so you can see what, uh, what you have available to you. It's a full-blown PC after all, right? Okay, let's move on to the next test then. Well, it's a pretty interesting little PC here that we have, right? I think that, uh, I don't know if I'll be running Windows on it going forward or not. I am thinking about using it as a general utility PC that'll sit in my rack along with the other equipment that I have, maybe running Linux even going forward so I can do some special testing with that, with an actual PC. It seems to definitely perform well enough for that. Although I saw it performing quite well, it was not lingering around at all in terms of my clicking or moving things around. It's obviously not going to be a high-end gaming or editing rig, but that's not what I bought it for. The main thing I did is I wanted to let everybody see what's available out there in some of these refurbished older PCs. This particular one being such a small footprint really makes a difference in terms of uh, what you can use it for. It's actually cheaper than a Raspberry Pi. Uh, I think Raspberry Pi, even if it were new, and we had the prices from two and a half, three years ago. So that's an advantage. And uh, we'll see how it goes. In the, in the follow-up video to this, which there will be one, I'm going to open this guy up. I'm going to take a look inside and see how difficult it is to maybe upgrade it. I have a feeling the memory may not be easy to upgrade. I think we might be maxed out already at 8 gigabytes, but I'm not 100% sure about that. But definitely from what I've read in the maintenance manual, we should be good in upgrading the hard drive. Well, in this case, a solid state drive, which is only 128 gig, then we, maybe we could bump that up 500 gig or maybe even a terabyte. So we'll see how it goes. So anyway, thanks for watching. Until next time.